In this brief video, I will present the common surgical incisions for the interior abdominal wall. Consider this information as extra material. You will not be assessed on your knowledge of surgical incisions of the interior abdominal wall. My name is Carlos Andres Suarez Quian. I am the creator and narrator of this video. Let's begin. The median incision was established to gain rapid and broad access to the abdominal viscera. The reason for this is that it can be made rapidly without cutting muscles, major blood vessels, or nerves. The incisions are made through the lunae alba, superior and inferior to the umbilicus. They are relatively bloodless, except in cases of excess fat. Recall, neither blood vessels or nerves cross the midline. However, because of poor vascularization, incisions at this spot may undergo necrosis unless cut edges are properly realigned during closure. This is why surgeons practice their suturing skills over and over and over again. This is the type of incision a surgeon makes when they really do not know what to expect inside the patient. They are good for exploratory procedures. Below the umbilicus, median incisions are frequently used for reaching female pelvic viscera, for example, a hysterectomy and or a cesarean surgery. The paramedian incisions are made in the sagittal plane and may be extended from the coastal margin to the pubic hairline. The incision goes through the anterior layer of the rectus sheath, but then the muscle is retracted laterally to avoid injuring vessels and nerves. The posterior rectus sheath and peritoneum are then incised to enter the peritoneum proper. The gridiron or muscle splitting incision is often used for an appendectomy. McMurray's incision, for example, is approximately 2.5 centimeters superomedial to the anterior superior iliac spine. The procedure entails incising the external oblique aponeurosis inferomedially in the direction of the fibers and retract it. Next, the musculoaponeurosis of the internal oblique and transversus are split along the course of the fibers and retracted. The iliohypogastric nerve is identified and preserved. Finally, if the incision is small and done carefully, healing is excellent. Teenagers can return to sports in a matter of weeks if all goes well. The fatted steel incisions are made horizontally with slight convexity. They are used for most gynecological and obstetrical operations. Indeed, they are the most common method for performing cesarean sections today. The linea alba and anterior rectus sheath are transected and resected superiorly. The rectus muscle is retracted laterally or divided through their tendinous parts. The iliopogastric and ilioinguinal nerves are identified and preserved. The transverse incisions are made through the anterior rectus sheath and rectus abdominis. They can provide good access and limit damage to nerve supply. Recall the in-series arrangement of the rectus abdominis. When muscle segments are rejoined and healed, they are similar to a new intersection. However, the incisions are not made at tendinous intersections. Cutaneous nerves and branches of superepigastric vessels 
pierce fibrous regions of the muscles here. Incisions are most useful above the umbilicus and can be extended laterally. However, these incisions are not good for exploratory procedures because superior and inferior extensions are difficult. The subcostal incisions provide access to the gallbladder, for example, to perform a cholecystectomy, as well as the biliary tree on the right side, or the spleen on the left side. The incisions are made parallel but at least 2.5 centimeters inferior to coastal margin to avoid the 7th and 8th thoracic spinal nerves. Today, however, 90% of cholecystectomies are performed laparoscopically. This now concludes the brief description of surgical incisions of the anterior abdominal wall.